Good morning, everyone. It's Auntie Janet checking in with you. This is the first Sunday in 2021. Can you believe it? We're at the beginning of a new year. And we didn't plan to necessarily have a Sunday school lesson on video, but because of some of the COVID lockdowns here in South Africa, we're not able to have an in-person church service for the next two Sundays, and I thought you would enjoy hearing a new missionary story. I have a story today about a man who has been used by God in amazing ways in recent years here in, all over the world, actually, and I'd like to introduce him to you today. I don't know if you've ever heard of him before, but his name is Ravi, Ravi Zacharias. Ravi Zacharias. And let's learn a little bit about Ravi. Our story begins when Ravi is just a young boy, about eight or nine years old, and he was sitting in his home with his mom in the country of India. India is very far away from both South Africa and for some of you kids who may be listening in North America, it's very far away from there. It's a hot country, and that's where Ravi was born and grew up. On this particular day, Ravi, like I said to you, was nine or ten years old, and he was sitting with his mom. Do you know what a sari is? Well, a sari is a large piece of cloth that Indian ladies wear and drape it over their clothes in a pretty outfit, and you see it often draped over them. This particular day, this man here with the gray hair was a salesman who was visiting Ravi's home and he had placed all this beautiful material on the floor all over Ravi's home for his mom and other ladies in the neighborhood to see and to decide if they wanted to buy some material to make a new sari. But the salesman was not only trying to sell material. In fact, he took a break from trying to sell the material and he told the women who had gathered there that he was able to tell their fortunes what would happen to them in the future. All they had to do was simply hold out their hands and he could read the signs from their hands. Ravi had never seen anything like that before. I'm going to put the picture down for a minute and see. I don't know if you can see on my hand here, but do you see the different lines on my hands? Well, this salesman looked at the different ladies' hands and he ran his finger along and would say, hmm, based on the shape of your sign, I think this will happen in your future. And some of the women agreed with him and thought, this was great. He told them wonderful things was going to happen, were going to happen to them and they were so excited. Ravi didn't know whether he believed it or not, but he decided to have a try. So he held out his hand to the salesman. And the salesman looked carefully at Ravi's hand and looked carefully and he said to him, hmm, hmm, and he was very serious. Ravi didn't know why. Why was he so serious? Why was he looking at his hand? And the man said to him, Ravi, I am going to tell you your future. And Ravi sat and he waited and he thought he'd wait and listen. But before the man told him, I want to tell you something. No human being knows the future. The only person who knows the future is God in heaven who created you and I, who loves us very much. He knows the past, he knows the present, present, and he knows the future. No person can tell you the future. That's only something that God knows because God knows all things. So when the man told Ravi he could tell him the future, he really couldn't. He was pretending to know. All he could really tell was that if Ravi had washed his hands or not. But as he looked at Ravi's hands and said, hmm, hmm, Ravi waited to hear. And the man said, I have bad news for you, Ravi. You will never travel much and you will never leave very far away from your home here in India. What? Ravi thought, that's not very good news. In fact, the people in India believed that if you were going to be successful, you needed to travel all over the world and see other places, not just stay close to home. Ravi thought, why? Why am I having a bad future here? I want to be a success. But Ravi had no idea. Back then as a boy, here he was disappointed that this man told him he wouldn't be a success. But little did Ravi know that God had a plan for his life. 
Back when Ravi was nine or ten, he knew nothing of the God of the Bible, the one true God who loved him, who made him, who sent his son Jesus to die for him. In fact, in the place where he grew up in India, many people had never heard of God. There was a religion there called Hinduism, and many people believed in Hinduism and attended the large shrines and temples there. The religion of Hindu teaches people that there are many gods. In fact, there's, all, there's millions of gods. And it's not what the Bible teaches in that the Bible says there is one true God and there is one way to heaven. But Ravi knew nothing of this. In fact, all he knew was the different religions around his home and nothing of the Bible. When he would go back and forth to school or play in the streets, he would see the large temples and shrines of the different religions, but he knew nothing of God or Jesus who loved him so much that he came to earth to pay the price for his sin. But there was somebody in Ravi's family who had heard of Jesus. In fact, we need to take a trip back, back, back to discover who this person was. I'm going to ask you a question. Do any of you know who your grandma is? Maybe you call her Oma or Nanny or Grammy. But do you know your grandma? I know my grandma. Do you know your great grandma who would be even older than your grandma? Some of you might still have great grandmas who are still alive. My children have a great Grammy Burl who lives in Canada and she's 91 years old and they love her very much. And Grammy is a very special person. So you might know your great grandmother too. But do you know your great, great, great grandma? I doubt it very much. It's very unusual for people to know their great, great, great grandma or grandpa. And that was the case for Ravi. Back many years before Ravi was even born, his great, great grandma, great, great, great grandma was a woman uh, who lived and her name was Balamani. This is a picture of Balamani when she was a young girl. And Balamani lived in the country of India as well. And she had her mom and her dad and she had five brothers. And her family knew nothing of the God of the Bible or of Jesus. The only religion they had ever heard of was the Hindu religion and that's the religion that they practiced. But when Balamani was a young girl, maybe in her late teen years, some people arrived in her village one day. In fact, they were white people. Here's a picture of the man. His name was Mr. Bosinger. And Mr. Bosinger and his family arrived in her city. And they, he had a special book. And he, they built a, a compound there with several houses and buildings. And they started to tell people about a man named Jesus who had come from heaven to pay the price from their, for their sins and how God loved them and that this was a Bible that he read from. Balamani had never heard of this before, but she was interested and had a lot of questions. So she would visit with Mr. and Mrs. Bosinger and wanted to ask more questions about this black book and who was this Jesus. And she visited with them for several weeks but then her brothers found out and they said to Balamani, you must not talk to this man anymore. What he tells you of this black book and about God and of Jesus, this is not good for you, Balamani. We tell you, you must not go back. And but Balamani wanted to go back. The Bosingers were so ni such nice people and she wanted to hear more about this little black book. But she knew she should listen to her brothers and do what they said. So she made a plan. I will go to the Bosingers one more time and tell them that I'm not allowed to return and just say goodbye to them. So this one day, Balamani went to the mission compound where the Bosingers lived, knocked on the door, and the Bosingers let her in. They were excited to see her. They started to talk, and Balamani said, I've come to say goodbye to you. My brothers have told me they do not want me to be friends and to know any more about this black book and about this Jesus, so I must say goodbye to you. And as she was just about to, to wave goodbye and leave the compound, a messenger arrived in at the door and knocked quickly on the door. Mr. Mr. Bosinger went to the door to see what the message was and why somebody was knocking so frantically. When the messenger came in, he said, Mr. Bosinger, I have bad news for you. I have been sent to tell you that there is a 
cholera outbreak in the city. Now you may wonder, what is cholera? And what's a cholera outbreak? Cholera is a serious disease that attacks, that puts bacteria in your tummy and it makes you feel very, very sick. And it can spread easily from one person to another. And there's many countries in the world that still people get sick from cholera, even though this happened many years ago. And guess what the messenger said? You are being put in quarantine. Does that word sound familiar? We all know what quarantine and isolation means since 2020 has hit and we all know about COVID and how you have to stay away when people are sick and go in quarantine and stay away from people. Well, that's exactly what happened, but it was a different disease called cholera. The messenger said, no one is allowed in or out of this mission until the cholera outbreak is taken care of. Oh no, what was Balamoni going to do? She wasn't allowed to leave the mission. Her brothers were going to be so angry when they found out that she had come to say goodbye to the Bossingers and now she had to stay there because she was being put in quarantine. What would they say? Well, Balamoni had to spend several weeks at the compound with the Bossingers and during her time there, she asked many, many questions about this book, the Bible. Who was God? Who was Jesus? And the Bossingers told her that God loved us so much that he knew that he had to pay for, make a plan to pay for our sin problem because we're sinners and cannot go to heaven because of our sin. So God sent Jesus. And Jesus came to earth as a tiny baby born in Bethlehem, as we've just learned over the Christmas season. Jesus lived a perfect life. He was perfectly God and perfectly man. And when Jesus was just over 30 years old, Jesus went to the cross to pay the price that our sin demanded. He died on the cross and paid the price for our sin. But Jesus didn't stay dead. Three days later, he rose up from the grave and now he was victorious. He was the victor over sin. And because of Jesus' payment for our sin, if we trust in him as our savior and ask him to forgive us of our sins, we can have a right relationship with God. Balamani had never heard such good news. She told the Bossingers that she wanted to pray and trust Christ as her Savior, and she became a Christian and started a relationship with God. After her quarantine was over, she went home, and she knew that her family would probably not be happy that she continued to talk to the Bossingers about the Bible. She was right. When she got home, her family was actually very angry, and they did something to Balamani. They told her that she could no longer be part of their family and she could no longer live in their home. And they actually kept her out of the house. Where would she live? Who would take care of her? Back in the days when Balamani lived, it was the practice that her father should find a husband for her to marry her and look after her. But now her father and her brothers refused to do this. They said, no. You disobeyed us and went back to the Bossingers and now you believe this Bible? No, you, we will have nothing to do with you. And in fact, all her friends turned her back on her. What would she do? She went back to the Bossingers and told them of her situation and the Bossingers let her come in. She actually even had to change her last name, her surname, and she became known as Bala, Balamani Zacharias was her last name. What do you think happened to Balamani? Well, as she got older, she found a Christian husband and she was married. And she began to tell her children and other, and other people around her all about the great change in her life that Jesus had made in her life. In fact, some of her family members became Christians. And that's where it comes in. She was Robbie's great-great-grandmother. And Ravi's family, his mom and dad, had heard about God and about Jesus, and they started to attend church. So as Ravi grew up, he had heard a little, he heard about Jesus and about God, but he never really had that relationship for himself. All Ravi liked to do was to play and have fun. Ravi was a good boy, and he had fun, and he was good at many things. I don't know if you've ever seen this sport before. I know the kids here in South Africa know exactly what it is. Ravi was good at the game of cricket. 
It's sort of like the game of baseball and the fact that you have a bat and a ball and you have to hit the ball and then run between the wickets to get points. Ravi was very good at cricket and loved to play it. But you know what? Ravi's mom and dad really didn't want him to spend all his time playing cricket. They wanted him to work hard at school and to get good grades. But Ravi, Ravi really didn't like school. He wasn't interested in studying and he didn't really care about school. All he wanted to do was play sports. His mom and dad would get frustrated with him trying to encourage him to do his homework, but he really didn't care. As Ravi grew older, he started to compare himself with his friends. He started to look at them and he thought, look at my friends. They're lucky. They come from rich families. They get good grades in school. But look at me. All I can do is play cricket. I don't get good grades at school and I'm poor. It's not fair. You know what? Ravi just gave up trying at school. All he cared about was cricket. He would come, he would go to school each day, but then he would come home and every afternoon he would play cricket for four hours and not take the time to do his homework. And then in school, he would be so tired from playing sports, he didn't even care and didn't listen to his teachers. This frustrated his parents so much. And his dad actually got very angry and told him several times, Ravi, you're just a failure. You'll never be good at anything. You must work harder at school. You're just a failure. And as Ravi heard this over and over, he started to take it to heart. Am I really a failure? Does my dad not really love me? Am I truly, what's the point of going on if I'm just going to be a failure? And he had lots of sad thoughts. He never told anybody about it, but he thought, what's the point if I'm just going to be a failure? And as he got older, he did go to college. His grades weren't great, but he went to college and he still had these sad thoughts. I'm just a failure. I'll never be anybody and no one really truly loves me. In fact, his sad thoughts got so sad one day he tried to hurt himself because he felt he couldn't tell anybody. And he ended up in the hospital. And while he was in the hospital with the doctors looking after him, there was a young man that God sent to befriend Ravi. His name was Fred. And Fred came to the hospital to talk to Ravi. And he, Ravi told him all his sad thoughts, how he thought he was a failure in life and no one cared about him. But Fred told him, Ravi, you don't know. There is someone who cares about you. His name is Jesus. Jesus loves you so much that he was willing to come from heaven to earth and to pay the price for your sin. There's a verse in the Bible, Ravi, that says that because Jesus lives, I can live also. Ravi heard those words. Because Jesus lives, I can live also. Maybe there was hope. Maybe he didn't have to be sad. Maybe he didn't have to feel like a failure. Maybe Jesus could be the hope that he needed. And as Ravi heard more from the Bible from his friend Fred, he realized that he was a sinner and that Jesus could be his savior. And one day, Ravi decided, I am going to ask Jesus to be my savior and be my friend. He asked the Lord to forgive him of his sin and to come into his heart and life because Jesus could give him hope. And after he prayed, Ravi, Ravi spelt sorry, felt so happy. He knew Jesus had come into his heart and life and had forgiven him. And now he had great hope in his life. He didn't have to think back to when he was a little boy back here at the beginning. Remember the man told him he would never be successful and never travel much? No, Ravi knew that now with Christ in his life, God had a plan for him and God would give him hope in his life for the future. Well, I'm going to stop for there and we're going to come back next week and find out what was God's plan for Ravi's life? What did God have in store for him? A good plan for his life. And I just want to tell you, if you've ever felt sad like Ravi has and feel like you need to talk to someone, you make sure you tell your mom and dad because there is hope in Jesus and God loves you so much. And that's why he sent Jesus to come and that God has a plan for your life and for my life. And it's exciting to find out what it might be. And next week when we come back, we'll find out God's plan for Ravi's life. See you later.